Sarah Ann Williams sighed as she looked in front of the porch from their medium-sized suburban home to her father, who was leaning waist-deep in their family car. Her brother stood next to him, holding the flashlight. She inhaled the crisp air before being met with the putrid smell of the leaking gas from the car. It burnt her nose. The smell made her light-headed, so she put her hand to her forehead to keep herself from falling over, as she had always been sensitive to strong scents. The prior week, the engine on the car had begun to steam profusely. Her father had refused to take it to a mechanic because, in his own words, I took shop class, damn it. I don't need grease monkeys telling me what I need to do or what I need to buy when I could figure it out myself. He tended to say something like that right before whatever he was working on fell to bits. His excuse for not hiring anybody was always brought back to the fact that he took shop class his senior year of high school. Sarah continued to watch as her brother continued holding the flashlight. He was obviously a little shaken up about being shouted at. The siblings were fraternal twins. She was the firstborn of the two and continuously bragged about being older. Her brother, who was named Kevin, was the taller of the two. He continued to stand, awaiting further instructions. Their father meant well. His constant shouting was defended by their mother, who summed it up to his upbringing in the center of New York. Sure, the yelling had gotten a bit old, but they had learned to live with it. It was a natural part of growing up, and the two tended to laugh when their friends got overly upset when scolded at by their parents. The twins found it silly to hold something that small against somebody who spent the majority of their life raising them. Sarah tried to shout out from the porch to her father that soon her friends, if you could really call them that, would be on their way to pick her up to take a tour of the new shopping center that had just opened up recently in town. It had been the talk of the city for months on end, some brand new company had recently begun buying up property all over the state. Most of the properties ended up being business centers and medical plazas, but this site ended up being a super mall, with a combo of both a shopping mall and movie theater. This was big news for the teens in the area because, with the origins of the city being mostly farmland, the town never really received any big city boom which caused it to be smaller, with not much to do for the adolescents in the area without having to travel an hour in any direction. However, before she could get the words out, a truck with awful brakes drove by loudly. The sound of the screeching brakes made her wince slightly. The truck was... strange. For being in the middle of the suburbs in Union Valley, California, it was strange to see a commercially licensed truck. On the side of the screeching vehicle was a large, worn-out logo of a pharmaceutical company that had strangely shut down in the year of 2020. Fire Labs. The back of the truck looked strange. The pull-up panel looked black and almost rusted. She talked it up to a delivery of some kind. The truck continued on its way out of her view. She put her hands in her hoodie pockets and stepped down from the porch and called out to her father. Hey, so I talked to Mom and she said to come talk to you. She started as her father popped out from under the hood of the car, covered in black oil and gunk. As he looked his daughter in the eye, Yeah? About what? He said. Well, she said it was alright, but they opened that new mall last week, and Carol and Max were hoping that now that the rush had died down a bit, we could check it out, if that's okay if I take off for a bit, she said, hopefully, as her father checked his watch. Well, it's 2.15 now, be back by 5, then she'll be alright. Sarah squealed at his response and restrained herself from hugging her father. Great, thanks, Sarah said happily as she turned away from her father. Wait, 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 he said as he glanced at his truck, then at his son, who was still tiredly holding the flashlight. You've been doing great. Uh, why don't you tag along with them? It'll be good for you to get out of the house. For once. Sarah shrugged and nodded before motioning to her brother by leaning her head towards the car that was now pulling up on the curb. Kevin flipped the switch to the flashlight into the off position and set it on the ground and began to follow his sister towards the car. Hey, and both of you wash your hands or, or wear a mask or something. I don't need you getting that damn virus. The siblings nodded and waved to their father as they entered the back seat of Sarah's friend Carol's car. The car smelled of air freshener. The seats were clean and the windows were spotless. It was beyond obvious that the girl cared for her car. As they entered the vehicle, there was some light pop music playing. Kevin squinted at the radio condescendingly while the car did a U-turn and headed in the direction of the mall. They all greeted each other with smiles, hellos, and light conversation about how their days had been. 
The drive wasn't expectedly long, but the girls did find the time to get in a sing-along of a popular song, much to Kevin's disapproval. He took out his phone and wired white earbuds, and started his own music to drown out the horrid singing. He had always preferred music from his grandfather's era, heavy metal and rock and roll. He found comfort in the loud drums and the lack of screeching mid-twenty-something-year-old women that the girls preferred to listen to. Once the song ended, the radio was shut off, so Kevin took out his earbuds to listen to the conversation. He couldn't bring himself to leave them when there was talking happening. He always felt like he was going to either miss something important in the conversation or they were going to talk about him without him being able to defend himself, so he just trained himself to take them out. So y'all ready to shop the night away? Sarah's friend, Max, said in a thick country accent. She was a shorter girl, with her blonde hair pulled up into a messy bun. She wore a yellow hoodie and blue jeans. She was the nicer of the two females that sat in the front seat. We only got until five, father's orders, Kevin stated as he stared out the window. Kevin never really cared for his sister's so-called friends. They liked to pick on the siblings, but somehow kept them around. He figured it was just because of the lack of other people that we put up with their constant insolent behavior. Five, that's going to cut our time down by a ton. We'll have to skip the movie. Not that I care. It's just some boring Earth flick about some jungle planet. Carol was obviously annoyed at their time restraint. She was the second friend. She was slightly taller than the first and sported cut short red hair paired with a denim jacket and black jeans. Once they pulled into the parking lot, they parked and exited their car and headed inside. Carol spoke once again. We've got a little under four hours to look around. I say we split up for an hour, then spend the rest of the time together. You and Kevin head towards that way. Me and Max will head this way. Meet back here at 3.30. Everybody nodded and went their separate ways. Sarah sighed. She knew this would happen. Her friends always seemed to leave her behind. She wasn't sure if it was intentional or not, but they were all she had, so she didn't complain. You gotta get new friends, man, Kevin said, interrupting her thoughts. Huh? Oh, well, at least they let you come, Sarah said with a light giggle, elbowing him gently as she began to zone out again. She began to think back to the truck that she had seen going by. She had wondered what prompted the sudden return of an old company that had gotten shut down when she was a child. It was believed to go bankrupt after it had such a rough time recovering from the catastrophe that happened in the mid-2020s, one that shook the entire world. It was the first day of summer, June 20th, 2020. Most families were out enjoying the warm weather by barbecuing and swimming when what felt like a shockwave flew across the whole world. Almost every electronic device shut off and began to pop and smoke. The devices that survived sent out a loud raid signal, alerting people to take cover in the nearby shelters. No one could tell exactly what had happened, but before anybody could even take their time to gather their belongings, they knew something was wrong. The shadows got closer. The loud crunching and smashing of metal and the screams of people in the radius of the crashes echoed loudly in people's ears all around the planet. You figure we should put on a mask or something? Kevin said once again, intruding on her thoughts as she looked around at all the people wearing medical masks. It seems like this is getting pretty serious, he said before facing his sister. You mean the virus? She said, looking up at him. Duh, what else? Well, um, I don't think the panic will last more than a few months. And besides, what's the worst that could happen? It'll open up the world a little. I mean... You and I both know how much mom talks about overpopulation and ozone, Sarah said with a giggle as she stopped to look at the window display on the front of the store that was covered in yellow caution tape. She turned back to her brother and spoke. You know? Kevin nodded in agreement before groaning loudly as he looked up at the name of the store that was closed. Oh, come on! Of all the stores that could have been closed, why would it have to be Anthony's? Anthony's was a store that specialized in dark apparel and geeky collectibles, both of which appealed greatly to Kevin. He was looking forward to seeing what the store might hold for him. The virus is getting way out of hand, he said as he turned back to the store, visibly upset, before nearly dropping his jaw at the side of the store across the way, still being open. You've got to be kidding me! Why the hell is Sue Allen still open? Sue Allen's was considered the girly store, mostly specializing in earrings and pastel colors. Sarah smiled at her brother and began to walk into the store across the way, 
Stay here. I'll be back in two minutes. I just want to check out the shoes, she said without turning around. Stay here and do what? Kevin grumbled before sliding down the wall, sitting down and beginning talking to himself. I need a new jacket, Kevin sighed as he glanced around, before locking his eyes on a maintenance and delivery hall door that had been left ajar. His lips curled into a small grin as he used his knee to stand. He slowly walked over to the door, looking around for anybody who might have been watching. When he saw that the only person that was watching him was his sister, he bounced his eyebrows in motion for her to follow him. She quickly shook her head and made a stop motion with her hands as he slipped behind the door. She sighed and set down the pair of black shoes that she had been looking at and half jogged over to the door before carefully opening it and slipping inside, following her brother who had disappeared from her sight. As she entered the back, she could immediately tell something was off. The air had become much cooler, and the lights were dimmer. She didn't think much of it, however. Kevin? She whispered as she turned a corner. She would have continued looking around, trying not to step too loudly in fear of being caught. She heard footsteps coming from around a different corner as she followed the sound, hoping for it to be her brother. It wasn't. She noticed a man limping down the hall. He looked ill. He was swaying back and forth, constantly checking his wrist. Suddenly, her brother popped up behind her. Hey, check out what I found, he said in a normal tone of voice. Shut up, she whispered loudly, motioning to where there had been movement from. Oh, sorry. L look what I found on the floor back there, he whispered in response, before holding up a leather trench coat that he had found in a box. She widened her eyes and pushed him back before shushing him and pointing towards the man dressed in a delivery person's uniform. He was leaning on the wall and holding his head. He continuously groaned before vomiting onto the floor. Oh, ew, Kevin whispered. As he grabbed his sister's shoulder and began to lead her towards the main mall area, she shrugged slightly before accepting his direction. It probably wasn't a good idea to be in the presence of somebody who was so obviously ill. They both cautiously exited the back area and began walking through the normal part of the mall. Okay, so technically this isn't stealing because it wasn't in the store yet, but dude, I cannot just leave this behind. Who knows when I could have come back to get it, especially if the lockdown is legit. Sarah paused and stopped walking, looking up at Kevin again. I'm sorry, lockdown? What lockdown? Did you not watch the news this morning? Sarah shot a look that can only be described as disgust at Kevin. When do I ever watch the news? Now cut the crap and tell me what's going on. Oh, uh, President Summers says that he was considering a full shutdown of the country. Like, no leaving the house or anything. Only essential workers can leave. Or regular people for emergencies and medical stuff or things like groceries. But apparently, we're currently in phase one. Most stores are shut down to reduce traffic for important deliveries. Something like that. Sarah scoffed defeatedly. That puts a big damper on our release from our school activities. She said, making quotation marks with her fingers. I thought we were going to have an extra long summer break. It's going to leave us with even less to do than before, Kevin said with a shrug and began walking again, now towards the exit of the mall. Where do you think you're going? Sarah said, becoming increasingly annoyed with her brother. Outside. The dumpsters have got to have something I can use. Last week, I found like 30 bucks worth of half spray cans behind the diamond hardware store over on 43rd and 6th Street. Sarah squinted her eyes and fake gagged. You mean to tell me... You dumpster dive? Is that what you and that freak friend of yours do when you're out? First of all, his name's Harry. And no, well, well not, not always. But regardless, come with me. You can hold my stuff. Sarah sighed and glanced around. Most of the stores she had wanted to visit were shut down, so... She sucked her teeth and began to follow her brother. It was already pushing through the crowded mall. As they continued to walk, a familiar feeling came over Sarah. One that filled her with absolute dread. Sarah and her brother were seven at the time. They lived in a different small town known for their cherries in Southern California. She remembered living across from a church that sat centered in a large field that their siblings often played in. She sat outside playing on her phone when the screen suddenly popped and caught fire. She remembered screaming and throwing it to the ground before looking into the sky to see several tiny dots getting bigger and bigger. She walked into the center of the street and covered the sun from her eyes to try and figure out what they were. They, of course, 
were planes. Five different planes. The one she recalled the most was a jumbo jet with a checkered pattern on the side. Sarah snapped back into the presence as she glanced around and watched as the televisions placed all around the mall began to shut off, followed by phones and other electronics. She shook her head sporadically and fell to the floor, hugging her legs tightly, rocking silently. She tightly closed her eyes to keep from crying. It became increasingly harder for her to catch her breath. She waited to hear the pops of the cell phones all around her. She waited for the sound of a plane bursting through the large glass roof above her. It felt like hours that she sat curled up, but when she finally opened her eyes and carefully glanced around, she noticed that everybody was merely puzzled at their device's sudden power failure. None of them had begun to pop. None of them caught fire. She looked up at the sky to see a plane continuing its course in the sky, not heading anywhere near her. She swallowed deeply and slowly and heavily stood again, watching as all the devices flickered back to life and continued where they had left off. She breathed a sigh of relief as she felt a hand grasp her shoulder. Hey, her brother said as he forcefully yet gently turned her around. You okay? He asked cautiously as he examined her face. Uh, yeah, I'm good. What happened? You were... You were there one second, and the lights flickered, and I turned around, and you were gone. Good. Just... I'm fine, she said as she dusted off her pants and stuck her hands into her hoodie pockets with a small smile towards her brother. Shall we? She said brightly as she walked past him and out the doors. Kevin furrowed his brow in confusion and looked around before he followed her out the doors. As they reached the back of the building, he spotted his prize. He found what he was looking for. It's a trash container's. He had recently become a fan of the hobby after his friend Harry had shown him a recent loot pile that he had found in the back of the local video game store. His score included a few out-of-print worthless games that would get maybe 20 minutes of joking out of before putting the game away and never touching it again, and a poster advertising a game that had been pushed back in date. The poster was their big score. It was one of their pair of young men's favorite video game franchises, although they had never played a second of it. Something about the lore just fascinated them. A large and toothy smile shone brightly on the young man's face as he gazed upon the container that enclosed the dumpsters. Yes, he said, as he ran past his sister, shoving his jacket that he had found into her hands, and began to try to open the container, which to his grand dismay, he discovered was locked. No, 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 come on, he said as he slammed his fist on the doors of the container. The metallic bang echoed loudly as he slouched backwards on the wall and hit his head with it with a sigh, before suddenly widening his eyes with a grin. Boost me. Hell no, come on. Boost me and I'll pull you up. It's not like you're doing anything else, Kevin said as Sarah rolled her eyes and sighed as she walked back to the container, setting down the jacket and got ready to boost her brother. On three? Yeah. One, two, three, she shouted, as he jumped into her clasped hands and she pulled up with all of her strength, launching her brother to the top of the wall. Once he was up, he put his arm down for her to grab onto, which she took and pulled herself up. The two stood on the wall, looking down at the three dumpsters. Kevin nodded slowly as his sister sniffed the air lightly with a disgusted look on her face. Okay, so Harry told me that the one closest to the left wall, facing the doors, is going to be food waste. Gross stuff we don't want to touch. The next one could either be exactly what we I want, or it could be recycling. Boring shit that would be a waste of time to dig through. Sarah nodded with a sigh as she lowered herself down the wall, followed by her brother. He flipped open the second dumpster, trying his hardest to stay quiet. As quiet as one could while digging through a giant metal bin. They opened one side of the plastic lids only to be met with a putrid smell. It was what she imagined a rotting corpse to smell like. The smell burnt her nose. The two threw their heads back in disgust and backed as far away from the container as the tiny wall would let them. Dude, what the hell is that? Sarah said, trying her best not to gag. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to know. The two forced their eyes shut as Kevin reached his arm out to close the container and slam it shut. Just as Kevin opened the third container, a familiar sight rang through Sarah's eyes. The chaotic screech of the brakes in the truck that she had seen driving down the road near her home. The sound made her head feel uneasy. 
She figured it was just the screeching that gave her a headache, but she wasn't about to take any chances of being caught either. She shut her eyes open and spoke. We need to go, now, she said, trying to keep her breath steady and keep her eyes open. It almost felt like vertigo flowing over her. Huh? He said as he whipped around to look at her. The color had almost completely left her face and her breathing had become heavy and labored. He sighed and nodded. This was something that happened often. The doctors call it PTSD. Through Kevin's research, he discovered that PTSD was formerly labeled shell shock. He preferred that term, and it greatly bothered his sister. She thought back to that day. She was trapped in fear, too afraid to move. She sat in complete terror as the jet smashed nose first into the field, catching it on fire before plowing straight into the small church. The smell of the fire burned her nose, and the smoke clouded her vision. She remembered something calling out to her. It was an unfamiliar voice, but thinking back, she never found out just who it was. Move, was all it said. No urgency or anything that stuck out to her, blatantly. But it was enough to snap out of her trance and get her to run inside where her family had already begun looking for her. It was a miracle that she survived. Somehow, no debris hit her. The worst thing that had happened was some slight smoke inhalation. The entire world had fallen into chaos at that point. Sirens echoed wildly, millions dead. The events would cause the United Nations to come together in the following months to ask people to carry on with their lives. To repopulate, reproduce. And that's what caused the current overpopulation. The one event that caused mankind to start its own doomsday clock. He helped her over the wall before joining her himself. You good? He asked, as she stared off into the distance. When she didn't respond or make eye contact, he followed her gaze. She stared at the side of a similar vehicle to the one Sarah had seen earlier. This one was a newer van, however. The van had large sliding doors on the side, each of which had leaked whatever black moss had been growing inside the liftable gates in the other truck. Fire Labs, Kevin asked with a scrunched brow. Didn't they shut down like ten years ago? Sarah swallowed, nothing in particular, and nodded at her brother's question. Never breaking her gaze on the truck. They, um, they got accused of human testing or something in the mid-2020s. Right around the, um, right after the planes, she said nervously. Kevin nodded and stepped in front of her, which gave her a slight sense of protection. Despite how much the siblings fought, argued, or even picked on each other, Kevin had always been her sense of protection. She couldn't imagine her life without him. Stay here. I'm going to check out what's up at the truck. N no, wait, Sarah said in a louder whisper, to no avail, as he walked away from her. She sucked her teeth and dropped her shoulders, following after him. Don't leave me, she said to him grabbing onto his arm and following closely behind. He nodded as they approached the van. It smelled like freshly cut grass mixed with gasoline. Kevin scrunched his eyebrows and squatted down, looking at the front of the van. There was a large square dent in the front of it, almost like it had pushed into something much smaller than the van itself. On the front of the van as well as an anti-ghost insignia from a very popular film from the 1980s. Ghost stoppers? Kevin questioned, with a surprised scoff before standing up and walking to the side of the van. The side opposite the one that had the black moss growing on it was open slightly. Kevin reached his hand out to the door and was about to slide it open when his arm was suddenly jerked backwards by his shoulder. He flipped around quickly and was faced by a man who was about a head shorter than him. Hands off the truck, the man said in a deep voice, which reminded Kevin of his father. Sorry, I just, I, I uh, saw the moss. I wanted to see what was inside. I thought it might be... It's not your property. Don't touch. Go home. It's supposed to rain tonight, the man said as Kevin arched an eyebrow at the gruff-looking man's statement and looked up at the completely clear sky. You sure? It looks clear to me. Get lost, kid, the man said as he latched the van door closed and pressed a button on his wrist-mounted device to lock it. It beeped loudly with a click. Hey, wait, Kevin said, 
obviously annoyed with the attitude the man had given him. Didn't these guys get shut down a few years back? Kevin inquired, pointing at the van over his shoulder. The man stopped, not turning around. He spoke. Don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. It'll only get you in trouble. The man said as he entered the maintenance doors of the mall, latching it closed behind him, leaving the twins outside. The hell was that about? Kevin asked. It's your fault. You shouldn't have been poking around where you didn't belong, exclaimed Sarah, smacking her brother on the upper arm. Whatever, dude, Kevin said, walking away from her, back in the direction of their house. Okay, once again, where do you think you're going? Home, he said without turning to face her. She sighed and half-jogged up to where he was, walking alongside him reluctantly. The majority of the walk home was silent. Sarah remained partially upset at her brother for getting them scolded. On top of that, he had stolen a jacket, one that he was making her carry. I'll admit, I was a little curious about the van, Sarah said with a giggle. We both were. Did you see the drive past the house earlier? Kevin questioned as he looked down at her. Yeah, what do you think's up with that? She responded brightly. Well, I mean, they show up when we're little, buy a bunch of shitty property, then the accident happens, and we never hear from them again exclaimed her brother, as he threw his hands up into the air, defeated. Well, honestly, I heard that they're torturing people behind the scenes, Sarah said, clutching the jacket tighter in her already crossed arms. Once the pair arrived home, they were greeted by their small dog, who happily barked and ran in circles around their yard. The two walked up the small steps and into their house. It wasn't a massive home, but it was comfortable. Their parents worked hard for what they had. The house they'd been in when the accident happened was now a part of an abandoned housing complex, one that had been taken over by the homeless, junkies looking for their next fix. The house seemed massive to the children. Their parents said it was only because they were small, but almost everything about that house brought back good memories. It wasn't anything close to being a modern home, even in 2020. It showed its age greatly. The countertops peeled, the showers were rotting, and their father swore that the home hadn't been painted since the 1980s. But the children loved it. They had become best friends with the children next door, and their collective fathers allowed them to cut a hole in the backyard fence to allow for easier access to their respective backyard play areas. The Williams' home was always the best spot to play. Their backyard had a massive pine tree the children had tested out different swings on, and in the end, they settled on a tire swing and a pair of normal swings. But after the planes fell, their families had drifted apart. Only Kevin and the older of the siblings next door, Harry, kept in contact. Harry was a respectable young man who focused a little bit too much on fiction. He liked reading comic books, and recently he'd started his own podcast, one where he talked about cryptozoology. As Sarah entered her room, she looked to the wall. On it hung a painting of a house with a red roof. The sky was blue and the grass was green. It reminded her of a not-too-long-ago past and a bright future that had been flattened by the greed of large corporations. The skies that once were a bright blue were now a dull, flat gray. She missed being able to lay in the grass, stare up at the clouds. She felt a wave of sadness overcome her as she sighed, and she remembered the time when she had hoped for the future. "'Hey, have you heard from Harry?' asked Kevin as he re-entered the room. Sitting on a chair across from where his sister had sat. No. Why? Sarah started with a scrunched eyebrow and lifted the tilt of her head. He texted me the other day asking me to make sure nothing happened to his podcast or something about coming to see me and I haven't heard from him since. Okay. And? She replied sarcastically at him. Seriously, that doesn't seem like the tiniest bit weird to you? Your entire friend group's weird. He probably just got grounded again. I'm sure nothing's wrong with him. She stated bluntly as she stood up and walked to the kitchen. If he got grounded, why would he ask to watch his podcast if nothing nothing was wrong? Kevin asked as he followed her into the kitchen. Look, dude, honestly, it's none of our business what's going on with him. If he wants to be weird and cryptic, let him, she said as she pulled the chair out from under the kitchen table. The noise of it squeaking across the tile floor made her wince slightly. Look, I'm sure he's fine. Just give him a few more days. Hey, maybe you got a girlfriend. Ugh, why would you even say something like that? Kevin replied as he watched his sister stand back up and begin making a sandwich. Jealous? She replied coyly as Kevin's face scrunched. 
Why would I be? I got better things to do than let some girl boss me around. Dude, you're 17. Maybe it's about time that you stopped acting like you're in third grade. Go out. Have some fun. Harry definitely is, she said with a wink. Wait, what's that supposed to mean? Kevin asked as Sarah smirked and shook her head. Suddenly, both their cell phones began to vibrate. They both took out their devices and glanced at them. The screen showed a live broadcast of the president. President Summers began to speak of a lockdown to slow the spread of the virus. C2TI, as they called it. He ordered a complete lockdown, no leaving the house whatsoever, vaccines being the only valid reason behind leaving the home. He assured that the virus would dissipate if people followed protocol and wore their masks while out. To find out more about Earth X Dead End, and to finish the story, check out earthxdeadend.weebly.com Join the mailing list and look forward to the full novel production soon. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to tonight's story or watching tonight's video. And if you guys would like to see more or hear more, then I'd appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. Or if you're listening on the podcast, then click the follow button. We're moving into spring, which means that uh, it's getting warmer, some places, and also that means that it's probably good for you guys to get a nice tall glass of iced tea. And if you've been here before, then you know that my wife sells things like tea. So yeah, check out Ivory Monocle Tea. It's etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to all you guys who support on Patreon, patreon.com slash MrCreepyPasta, especially Jacob Schaefer, Jay, Zach, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Diana Krause, Katrina Beasel, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Miss Exandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Frickin', Azarine Fox, Robert White, Andreas Garza, Snails Burnin, Legit Quad Feed, Fried Chicken 12, James Bruce, Chris Lovin, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, Justin Johnson, 1-800-Nightmare, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Jason Wilson, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Plater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Brian Arse, Cryptic Nightmares, Brennan Wright, Someone You Love, S-Man, Kiwi the Sloth, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Talon Karlick, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Cordy Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, and if you guys would like to join them on the list of people's names I mispronounce, you can always do so at patreon.com slash MrCreepyPasta, as well as all those fine people in the description down below who help support this channel and keep the lights on and give treats to Hylas and Hercules. You guys, as always, are the real MVPs, and I love and appreciate every single one of you who support there or just support anywhere by watching and subbing. So good night, everybody and sweet dreams. <laughs>